Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. We're in Psalm 103 this morning as we continue on our journey through the Psalms, and we'll be reading verses 8 to 12 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this glorious day. What a joy it is for us to come into your holy presence, to pause and to reflect on your word, and to listen for your still small voice speaking to us. And so, God, we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. So, Psalm 103, verses 8 to 12. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. These familiar verses from the psalm, from this psalm of David's, remind us of God's continuing provision, his continuing love and grace poured out for us who seek him with our whole heart. David begins by, by reminding us that the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The God we serve, the God that we worship, the God that we seek is the God of compassion and unfailing love. And it breaks my heart when I hear people today saying that, that, that the Bible is hate literature and that Christianity is a, is a religion of hate. And nothing could be farther from the truth, friends. That doesn't mean that there aren't Christians who do hateful things, do evil things. But that's not the way of God. That's not the will of God. The will of God is for us to experience his compassion and unfailing love. And then, the, then David says, he will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. What a blessing that promise is. That he will not constantly accuse us. In other words, he's not like so many people today who will continue to bring up past hurts, past um, acts of, of deceit or, or evil. They continually remind you of how much you have failed. They continually bring up the ways and means by which you have not been an exemplary Christian. Greg Laurie talks about you know, engaging with somebody about the church and the person says that he had no time for the church. It's just filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And Greg Laurie says, that's true. And there's room for one more. And the reality is we all fall short of God's glorious standard each and every day. None of us measure up. None of us are good enough. But God, who is compassionate and filled with unfailing love, continues to pour out his grace, and he will not constantly accuse us. When we confess our sin before the Lord, when we come before the Lord in prayer with a penitent heart and confess our sin before him, he is quick to forgive. And he will not accuse us. Now, there are times when we don't confess our sin before the Lord and he will convict us. He will cause us to be restless in our spirit, in our hearts. 
And that is God beckoning us to come to him, to ask his forgiveness, to confess our sin before him so that we may be forgiven through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ. David says, he does not punish us for, our, for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. Jesus took our sin upon himself. He took the punishment for sin that we deserved upon himself when he died on the cross at Calvary. The punishment that was laid upon Jesus is the punishment that was due us for our sin. But he bore our sin upon himself on the cross at Calvary, shedding his blood for our sake, so that we could be set free from the bondage of sin, and so that we would not face the punishment that is due all who sin and are not penitent, do not seek God's forgiveness. David says, for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. In other words, God's love for us is unfathomable. It's, it's unmeasurable. We, we can't even begin to comprehend the depth and the height and the width, the breadth of God's love. For each one of us. God is love. God is love. And we are his beloved children. He loved us from the very beginning and he loves us still. And he will love us for all eternity. And as Paul says in, in Romans chapter 8, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. When we look at Jesus, we get to see, in part, the extent of God's love for each one of us, his beloved children. The fullness of his love, the fullness of his grace, the fullness of his compassion. We won't see until we leave this life and enter into glory. But we have a foretaste of it. And there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from his love revealed to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. But we have to be in Christ Jesus to experience that love and that compassion and that grace and that mercy. <clears throat> and so David concludes this section by saying he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Friends, that's how much God loves us, that he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. In other words, there is no extent to which God will not remove our sins, that God will not accuse us constantly of our sins, that God will not con con continue to bring up our past sins. He has cast them as far as the east is from the west. It's immeasurable the extent to which God has removed our sins through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, friends, Whatever you're, you are facing this day, know that you can go to the Lord with it and know that he will 
be present and help you with it. And, re and also know, friends, that there is nothing that you have done in your life that can separate you from God's love for you. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we submit ourselves to his will being done, when we surrender ourselves to him and ask God to forgive our sins in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And they are cast as far as the east is from the west. And we are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. And we enter into a new reality. We are born again into a new life that God has prepared for us and that Jesus was prepared to die for us to have. And that's why we can worship the Lord with joy and thanksgiving. Because a victory over sin and over death has already been won for us through Jesus Christ. To experience that victory, we simply need to accept Jesus' free gift of salvation through the cross on, on Calvary's hill. So friends, I encourage you this day, take time to spend with the Lord Ask his forgiveness for your sin and worship him in spirit and truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word which convicts us but also encourages us and gives us hope. We thank you, Jesus, that you are willing to lay your life down for ours, taking the punishment for our sin upon yourself, shedding your blood that we may be washed clean. Jesus, we acknowledge that there is nothing that we can do to improve upon what you have already accomplished on the cross at Calvary. We thank you for your free gift of salvation. the opportunity for us to spend eternity in your presence. So God, I pray that you will lead us this day, that your hand of favor will be upon us. Lord, that you will help us to walk humbly with you. And that we may worship you with joy and thanksgiving this day. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures from Psalm 104. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.